This is the sermon for February 12th, 2023. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 13 from the message. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy, but don't love, I'm nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountain, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I'm nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I'm bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut, doesn't have a swelled head, doesn't force itself on others, isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, takes pleasure in the flowering of truth, puts up with anything, trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Understanding will reach its limit. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. Well, I love this little poem, four lines, four short lines from Mary Oliver. Someone I loved once gave me a box full of darkness. It took me years to understand that this too was a gift. That's Mary Oliver. A box of darkness. It took me years to understand this too was a gift. I wanna talk about surprising things about love. Our culture tends to think of love as syrupy sweet and romantic, and really a lot of things that are infatuation are called love. Love happens over the long term as we deeply know one another. It happens in communities, in families, in churches. Um, it happens anywhere that people commit to one another, but it takes time to develop. And there's a depth to it. And there's an understanding about boxes full of darkness and suffering. And so that's what I wanted to talk about today. There's um, a passage from Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which is an old book, 1970s, I believe. And they talk about the old Burmese monkey trap. The idea is that you have a coconut chained to a stake and they drill a hole in the coconut just big enough for a monkey to squeeze the hand and fit it through the hole. And on the inside, the monkey can smell rice, cooked rice and the monkey grabs hold of it and thinks that it's going to pull it back out, but the hole's not big enough. The hand could come out, but not with the rice. And I think that we become like that monkey. We become trapped. Our mind latches on to something that may not be the best. It may not be helpful as we hope it will be. Uh, you think about the monkey it's trapped because it won't let go of the rice, and so it's stuck there. There's a whole world of food. <laughs> and so why just that, that bit of rice? And I think we're like that with our thoughts. 
Uh, the comment was made, you're only caught on the trap because you won't release your grip. But is that little scrap of food you're holding really worth being stuck? There's nothing wrong with the rice. We can get uh, stuck by things that are good uh, inherently, but is that what we need? And C.S. Lewis once said that the gates of hell are locked from the inside. So all we have to do if we find ourselves in hell is throw open the latch and leave. But a lot of people see that the door is locked and they think, can't get out. <laughs> and not every difficult situation is our own choosing. They get landed on us by situations and by life. But what if we think of the word release? Some people choose a word for the year. And uh, someone I know of chose the word release as a guidance. And he wasn't into tattoos, just like I'm not, and, but he decided to use a marker and write release on the inside of his arm periodically so that he would see it and remember that that's the guiding word. I chose the word emerge for this year of 2023 because it is my year to come fully out of a bad situation and come into myself. And so what appears worthwhile very often to grab and hold on to might trap you. And so you want to ask, what is it that appears really good but may not be the most helpful for you? Uh, Bible readings often present us with choice, uh, life and death, prosperity and adversity, or in this case, in 1 Corinthians 13, love and ego. Remember, ego is my way or the highway, put in short terms, and love is so expansive and so big. And so what might you be holding on to that isn't the fullness of the love of God in life? Are we living into the fullness of being loved by God in this moment and every moment? I was reading a book about uh, grace and it talked about how whether we want it or not, it's there. Whether we accept it or not, grace is there. It's an underlying foundation for who we are and everything we do and that grace is given by God. When I serve communion, I often talk about the banquet that Lady Wisdom spreads and there's a tablecloth and finest silver and flowers and cloth napkins. I love to tease about that. And it's beautiful food. It's the best food and the best wine. And um, that's the kind of banquet that God spreads for us. And that's the goodness of God given to us if we receive it, if we are open to it. So the question is love or ego? And Often in the world, we see what I call blowhards, and they love to hear nothing more than the sound of their voice. They don't listen, but they force other people to listen to them, and they demand to be listened to, but they don't listen and take in other people's experiences and realities and feelings and, and all of that. And so we have a choice. We are completely loved by God, so we don't want to puff up the ego and let that, uh, and when we experience it in others, sometimes we need to slough it off. We just need to let it go. Um, yeah, as I said, we're often trapped by our thinking. The thinking runs and runs and runs. It chatters like a monkey. Uh, in Buddhism, they call it monkey mind because it jumps from place to place all over. And um, yeah, we can hold things loosely good things and let go when needed. Uh, we need to move away uh, from the things that don't matter and move toward the things that deeply, deeply matter as described in 1 Corinthians 13. Um, this is a hard love. This is a love that encounters suffering. It endures suffering whenever necessary. And yet also it's not good to look for suffering. So there's a time to let go of suffering and there's a time to endure it and get through it. It's our choices, our will, and the compelling love of God that we respond to. So the passage starts out by saying that no matter how impressive you are, no matter how impressive your accomplishments, 
No matter how great your faith, without love, it amounts to nothing. The greatest, the most impressive is worth exactly nothing without love. Think of all the upheaval and change in the early Christian communities. They were Jewish and Christian, and Jewish people had to get used to associating with Gentiles. Very new thing. And there might have been judgment and looking down on uh, from certain people, wealthy to poor, no matter what it was. Uh, I came across a saying that says, big egos are big shields for lots of empty space. And the life of the spirit is building up community and not getting carried away with one's own experiences. Every single one of us brings a gift. First Corinthians 12 is about all the gifts that we bring to the community. And I also love this quote, sometimes it's okay to take a step back and admit you're being ridiculous. That helps us uh, move away from ego because we all get caught in it, every single one of us. Compassion asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into places of pain, to share in brokenness, fear, confusion, and anguish. Compassion means full immersion in the condition of being human. So when we are not enduring suffering, we can enter into it with other people and help them carry the burden. And that's the love and the beauty of community. Love hopes even in dark times. Things don't always turn out as we want. And Jesus recommended that if you're forced to carry a soldier's pack one mile, carry it two. And then when the soldier gets up from falling over from shock, then you can talk about why would you, why would you do such a thing? And um, Jesus wanted the apple cart upset so that new possibilities could happen. And love does that. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Courage can be quiet and not loud like a lion's roar. Sometimes courage is the quiet voice at the end of the day saying, I will try again tomorrow. Loss can lead us into negativity, into um, constriction. Uh, loss can, but love opens it up and connects us with other people, and we know we're not alone. Amen.